Now let's take a look at dealer and router sockets and the dealer router pattern. So we looked at the request reply sockets, the request sockets sent requests to the reply sockets and the reply socket had no choice of uh, whether or not it wanted to send back a response or whether it wanted to send a response to a different socket. Well, dealer and router sockets are very different than that. Dealer sockets can send requests and they can uh, obviously receive messages, but what's special about dealer sockets is that uh, they do not have to follow the send and receive cycle. They can keep sending or they can keep receiving. Router sockets are even more powerful in that router sockets track the identities of the sockets that uh, send them messages. And the router can, as the name suggests, route the messages wherever it wants. So you can have these incredibly uh, complex um, patterns emerge with the dealer and uh, router socket. So for example, you can have a trading strategy A dealer, trading strategy B dealer that uh, send messages to the router and then the router sends that message to uh, a, let's say some kind of a hedging dealer and then you have an execution dealer and you can hook all these up and uh, you can get these very incredibly complex uh, patterns with dealer and router sockets. Now I am hesitating to use the word asynchronous mechanisms uh, because you can get asynchronous behavior with the existing sockets that we've seen if you use uh, the polar and we will look at the polar uh, later on. Uh, but for now uh, the way to look at dealer and router sockets is in terms of patterns rather than uh, synchronicity or asynchronicity. Okay, the patterns are fundamentally much more powerful than the sockets that we've seen before. Let's first get a basic example running. I'm going to create two Visual Studio projects, both C++17. Set up the text side by side. Grab the imports. Create a dealer socket. Connect it to 5555. And in this case, dealer sockets connect and router sockets will bind. And remember, it's the stronger socket that binds, the server socket binds, although that's not always clear in certain cases. We'll generate some random numbers, create a JSON payload, dump it to a string and into a Z buffer and send it. Then we create a router socket, bind it to 5555. We'll listen for a message. And that ZMQ receive multipart is actually a part of ZMQ underscore add on. If you're using ZMQ.hpp, you won't find that there. So that's why we've been using this. So there you see the messages being delivered router side. And what you'll notice is that they are multi-part messages. Ignore the true. The true is the return condition that we're printing out. But for each iteration, you see that there is a default message identity and then the payload. 
So the router assigns a default identity to every socket that it receives a message from. We can also assign custom identities so that it's more understandable by humans. In real pipelines, uh, you want to sort of be able to reason about um, the flow of information, how the system is wired up. So it helps to have sort of human understandable identities uh, on each socket. And there's a ZMQ identity tag on a set socket option. You have to set that before you connect. And now router side, the identity is strat A.